Over the last couple of weeks, I've had a few people ask how you can go about creating 808 slides within Studio One. So in this quick tip tutorial, that's what we're gonna take a look at. So I've got a basic track here uh, that I'd like to add an 808 with slides to. So I'll go ahead and play this back. We could hear it as it is. Okay, so I've got this 808 on the sample one. I'll go ahead and stop playback. But I'd like to add this with slides. And as you can hear it, it's pretty muddy as it is. So really, if you're gonna work with uh, 808s in sample one, which is one of the devices that you can use to create the slides, you're gonna wanna put this into mono. So now when I trigger multiple pads, they're only gonna play back one at a time because when we have mono on, uh, turned off, then we can it's allowing up to 32 voices. So as I trigger this, you can see five, six, seven voices playing back at the same time. So that's why that sounds muddy. And if you've ever, ever experienced that, one thing you can do is activate mono. So now when I turn that on, we're only allowing one voice at a time. Okay, now if you notice here, we have glide. When mono is off, you won't see that. But as soon as we turn that on, we can activate the glide function here. So now when I turn this on, when I press and hold a pad and then trigger another one while still holding that first pad, we create that glide. Okay, so this knob here is our glide time. By default, that's gonna be on 58 milliseconds. We can take this all the way up to one second. So now when I press and hold, while holding trigger another pad, we're gonna have a one second glide um, down, down to that next pad. So I'll press and hold, then trigger the second pad. Okay. Now you can, I triggered a third time and we kind of ran out of space here. So the glide feature really, you're gonna have, wanna have a long 808 if you're gonna be working with a sample. We do have a workaround, which I'll show you in a second, but, um, so now when I play my track back here, let's start kind of towards the end and cycle back. Actually, I don't want a full second. Let's take that to about 500 milliseconds. Okay, there's some tuning issues, but let me actually drop this down an octave. So that's definitely out of tune, but Okay, so you get the idea with the glide here, you know, never minding the uh, out of tune 808 here, we could always come to the pitch section and adjust the tuning and or transpose here. Um, so anyway, this is one method that you can go about doing that. Now, what if you have an 808 sample that's not as long as this? We can, so let's find a shorter. Okay, this is a, kind of a short one here. So kind of a workaround that we can use is the loop feature within sample one. So it's gonna be off by default, it's here. We can turn this on and choose sustain. So when we choose sustain, that's activated now. And if you notice, we now have a bracket. So what this means is that as long as I'm holding a pad down or if you're holding a key down on your controller, it's going to loop this region over and over for as long as you're holding that key or that pad. Now you may, you're probably gonna have to adjust, play around with the position of this bracket. 
Uh, you may need to shorten it or lengthen it. It all depends on the sample, the particular sample that you're working with. But if I press and hold the pad now, as long as I'm holding, it's going to continue to cycle through this section here. Okay, and there's even a bit of some popping in there, so you could really come in and uh, make some fine adjustments to where you have this. So this actually snaps to zero crossing by default, so it's going to try to snap to an area where there's not, there's the least amount of audio information going on. You can see here, this is a zero crossing. If I scroll over here, then you can see it already has snapped to that. So it's going to snap to those zero crossing areas. Let me just try this again and hear if that... Yeah, so there's still a bit of um, popping in there. But an another thing that you can use is the crossfade. You can take this up and this should... Yeah, so that's gone now. So you can use the crossfade to get rid of any clicks or pops that you may have if you're going to work with the uh, loop feature. But this is one thing that you can experiment with when you're using shorter 808 samples to kind of give you more time to create the glides that you would like. Now I'm actually going to... Well, one other, one other thing that you can use is the pitch bin. And so you can access that using the pitch bin on your MIDI controller. I don't have the Atom set up to control the pitch bin. Um, but we can see the will here. This is set to three semitones. So the pitch bin is going to raise or lower by three semitones. So when I trigger the pad, okay, you can use that pitch bin. It's going to be a hell of a lot better to use it on a controller versus your mouse. And then you can always record this your uh, pitch bin movements and that will be retained within the song. So if we were to actually, let's double click and create a MIDI part. I will double click on that MIDI part. Let's zoom out a bit here. Add a note. So we can see the pitch bin is here and if you record your automation, then it should show up here. And um, But you can even come to the pencil tool or the paint tool and draw in automation as well. And actually I'm going to press 1 to activate the arrow tool and just click hold and drag to select these first points. We don't really need those. I just want a clean transition. So now we have a really long pitch bend down. It's probably gonna sound crazy, but I'm gonna play this back. Okay, so that is yet another thing that you can do. It's re it sounds really crazy, doesn't it? Okay, and there's even a, uh, a bend point here, so we can we can bend this and tweak it however we'd like the flow of that glide. And of course, I just made this really long just to make it really obvious what's going on here, but you can have it for however long or short that you would like for it to be. You could even get crazy with it and come to the paint tool, select a sign, and the sign is going to work to whatever you have your quantize set to. So if we were to set this to, say, half a bar, come in and draw that in. This is going to sound really crazy. Let's hear it. Okay, that's like DJ Magic Mike stuff or something. Uh, anyway, so another option that you could do is just make your own 808. And if we come to instruments, let's bring in the Mai Tai. Um, let's initialize that 
patch. So now we just have this one oscillator active. We can come to that and let's choose a sign. Let's lower that by an octave. One more octave. Okay, so we can go about creating our own 808 and we would need to adjust the amp envelope here. So we could take the release time up. If I press and release and extend that out, Okay, and again, that's a little bit muddy because we are in polyphonic mode. We can, you can see that here. If I activate mono, we can clean that up a bit. We can add a bit of drive to that. Some punch. We can even come to the character section. Okay, and just my point is we can also use, we can create our own 808 and set it up, get the sound that we'd like with distortion, character, within my tie, and we can activate the glide here. And again, if you hover, we can see we're at 100 milliseconds. I could raise that up to say 600 milliseconds. Press and hold while I'm holding. I'll press another pad. Okay, and these are just a few ways that you can go about working with 808 slides in Studio One. I hope that this answers you guys' question, who have left, those of you who left comments about this. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them below. And uh, we're gonna, we've got some more tutorials that I've been working on. Um, and also the Falcon tutorials are gonna be coming in the next day or two. I've been working on those as well and studying the manual and all of that. So we're gonna start on that in the next day or two. Look out for that. And uh, I think we'll wrap up here. Thanks for watching, guys.